Try to do this activity and observe what will happen. First, hold a tennis ball with your hand and raise it up to the level of your head. Then let it fall down freely. The ball will hit the ground and jump to a height that is less than its initial one. And it will keep bouncing. And the height of each bounce will decrease gradually till it settles on the ground. What happened here is that as you raise the ball, the work done by your hand is stored in the ball in the form of potential energy. So the kinetic energy is zero, while the potential energy is at its maximum value. And accordingly, in this state, you will find that the mechanical energy equals the potential energy. However, when the ball is at its midpoint between your hand and the ground, you will find that the potential energy equals the kinetic energy which is equals half the mechanical energy. And finally, when the ball reaches the ground, the potential energy is totally converted into kinetic energy. And as a result, the potential energy equals zero, and the kinetic energy reaches its maximum value. And accordingly, in this state, you will find that the mechanical energy equals the kinetic energy. Let's assume that you did 10 joules of work, when you raise the ball, in this case, the kinetic energy equals zero, and the mechanical energy is equals to the potential energy, which is equals 10 joules. Then, assume that the kinetic energy equals 10 joules, when the ball hits the ground. So, in this case, the potential energy equals zero, and the mechanical energy is equal to the kinetic energy, which is equals 10 joules. At the midpoint, the potential energy equals the kinetic energy, so the mechanical energy equals half of the potential energy, plus half of the kinetic energy. Hence, the mechanical energy is equals 10 joules. Finally, we can conclude that the kinetic energy is converted into potential energy and vice versa. Thus, the mechanical energy will equal the summation of potential energy and kinetic energy.